Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage on this wonderful Tuesday, July 16th. In today's weather forecast, we're going to be looking at a refreshing cool down across the United States with more potential heavy rain across the southeast, which will alleviate drought conditions. And we'll look in the long range as well into next week and your tropical weather update at the end of the video. So if you do like today's weather forecast, make sure to give it a like and subscribe down below. Two easy clicks of the buttons, like and subscribe and also leave any comments questions and concerns below we'll get to those after the video so now if you remember around a week or so ago we actually put out a forecast here weather on the go for a severe weather forecast from July 13th through the 16th noting that there was likely going to be severe weather across portions here in the orange from the northern plains into the upper midwest the great lakes and ohio valley and it did actually verify even though we identified this a week in advance and looking at some of the preliminary storm reports between july 13th and july 16th and this is just as of this forecast so more could be added after this forecast was produced but as of now wind reports up to 839 between those days 109 hail reports and so far only nine tornado reports but i have a lot of confidence that this number is going to grow well beyond nine even after this forecast so going back to yesterday we actually did have a very powerful mesoscale convective system that blew up across central iowa and moved east into northern and central illinois into portions of indiana southwestern lower michigan and into ohio and that produced a lot of widespread wind damage even some hurricane force wind gusts over 80 90 miles per hour were reported also several QLCS tornadoes were reported here across portions of the Chicago land back to the Davenport Quad Cities region and even all the way back when those storms initiated back into the Des Moines area as well some hail reports as well scattered about so we had a lot of severe weather yesterday today here's the synoptic pattern that ridge is still across the four corners region but it's losing its luster on the eastern periphery as that trough digs down from southeastern Canada into the Midwest the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley today and you can see that's bringing a potent cold front with it and as that cold front sinks a little further south it's going to bring some nice refreshing cooler air but also lowering the humidity further to the north as well so let's look at the heat headlines across the united states as a whole we have some heat headlines across the pacific northwest that will continue as the ridge is stronger over here we have heat advisories in the orange across portions of the southern plains and lower mississippi valley region excessive heat warnings in it around little rock memphis here as well as up the east coast from the new england coast down into the mid-atlantic coast and the carolina coast as well as we go through today with those heat headlines looking at the afternoon high temperatures here we are back into the 90s and triple digits across the southern u.s but look at the more refreshing canadian air mass settling in across the upper midwest the great lakes and ohio valley into the 70s and the 80s and a lot less humid up there as well while further to the south ahead of the front we still haven't seen that refreshing air move in yet. So heat index values again today, 110 in Little Rock, 105 in Memphis, 106 in Dallas, 107 in the Oklahoma City area, and 111 in Tulsa. So it's going to be another hot, scorching day as well. And all the way up the East Coast here, we have a lot of triple-digit heat index readings as well. Now, all of that heat and humidity, like we saw yesterday, will lead to the storm energy, your convective available potential energy. Not as high as yesterday, but still, you can see those per Purples in here that's around 4,000 joules per kilogram here as we go through the day today and there's a large area of concern for severe weather from a marginal risk in the dark green to the yellows that's a slight risk to the orange up here in New York State and in portions of the Northeast that is an enhanced risk level three out of five on the risk scale the biggest concern today again will be those 60 perhaps 70 mile per hour wind gusts especially up there in the central New York also some hailstones could be quarter size maybe slightly larger in some spots here especially in this brown yellow shaded colors and a couple of tornadoes to be ruled out as well potentially across portions of eastern Nebraska and up into central portions of New York as well could be seeing some of those tornadoes as we go through today 
3 p.m. this afternoon here. Within the hour, we can see a couple more showers and storms firing up across the Missouri Valley, downstate Illinois, and southwestern Indiana. Some bigger storms crossing through central and upstate New York. We'll be keeping a very close eye on. Getting into 6 o'clock here this evening, you can see some scattered activity. Not too much happening out there, but things start to get going as we go into this evening. 9 o'clock this evening, mid-evening hours, we start to see a new round of showers and storms across portions of southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, back toward Tulsa there, and then those will continue to grow upscale very slow moving as well so not only severe weather will be the concern as we get to the 9 p.m time frame and then midnight into wednesday morning but very heavy rain stretching from kansas into missouri here northern arkansas all the way across the ohio river valley here into places like Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and Southern Illinois. Some of these areas could see upwards of two inches worth of rain in a short amount of time. So there is a slight risk of flash flooding extending along the Ohio River and just south and then west back here toward Missouri, Arkansas, Kansas, and Oklahoma where that frontal boundary is kind of slowing down and we have some slower moving storms and then a marginal risk of some flash flooding up into interior New England or back into the Four Corners region for the monsoonal moisture back there. As we go into Wednesday, tomorrow the front is not going to make much headway further south but it will be moving it'll just be moving very slowly and you can see by Thursday it's only getting into Dixie Alley and into the southeast Tennessee Valley region as we go into later on in the week it will be bringing though a much more anticipated refreshing cool down across the eastern U.S. look at the upper Midwest struggling to reach the low 70s in the places like the Twin Cities Chicago Milwaukee up the lakefront to Green Bay there Des Moines at 80 as we go into Wednesday afternoon Thursday afternoon, much more of those 70s pressing further south. St. Louis may not even hit 80 as we go into Thursday afternoon. Meanwhile, at west, you noticed on Wednesday and now into Thursday, we have a lot of heat in those whites building. That is those 90s triple digits going all the way into California, the Pacific Northwest, even up here into Alberta, Saskatchewan, and British Columbia, Canada, and the western Canadian prairies. We're starting to heat up as we go into Wednesday, Thursday afternoon as well, and that even extends over into Friday. So, so looking at storm potentials, we go into tomorrow, we still have that slight risk, level 2 out of 5 from the I-95 corridor back down here toward Virginia keeping an eye on that. Marginal risk back here to the front range in the western plains. Hail and wind will be the main threat and then as we go into Thursday, marginal risk for storms, especially centered around the panhandle of Nebraska and western Nebraska by then. And then as we go into Friday, nothing outlooked on the day four outlook, so that's some good news. No active weather ahead by the end of the week. Going through the rest of the work week, this goes through your Saturday morning commute. On July 20th, the heaviest rains will be settling in across the southern and southeastern U.S. and then up the east coast where you see these yellows, oranges, and reds. That's where we could be seeing one to two, locally even three inches worth of rain through the end of the week. As we get into the weekend on Saturday, July 20th and Sunday, July 21st, that trough that's coming out of Canada will kind of sit around for a while across the central and eastern two-thirds of the country. Big ridge of high pressure over here into western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. We'll be keeping our temperatures very warm over here, but that trough in the middle of the country in the eastern part of the country will be be keeping us below normal compared to this time of year here with our temperatures and looking at the weekend Saturday can't get much better than this for highs across the northeastern U.S. We have highs in the 70s and 80s for July 20th that continues into Sunday as well some more excessive heat further to the south but mainly out west as we go into that Sunday time frame from the Pacific Northwest Western Canada all the way down into the desert southwest here you guys know the drill Arizona Nevada Southern California it's very hot this time of year that will continue. What about precipitation? So as we go into Saturday, we're going to be seeing some scattered showers and storms across the middle of the country and the southeastern part of the country as a more diffuse cold front continues to move further south. That'll wash out a little bit as we go into Sunday, but still some active weather down there along that front as we go into later on in the weekend. That's really where the active weather will be this weekend, really across the central southern plains and then across the southeast, really the southeast coast. Very dry in the Ohio Valley, the northeast and out west, pretty dry as we go through the weekend as a whole. And going into next week, Monday, July 22nd through Friday, July 26th, that trough just continues to sit across the middle of the country and then a ridge starts 
starts to strengthen out west. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of the same things we're seeing that late this week and this weekend will continue into much of next work week with more cooler than normal temperatures over here into the central and eastern U.S., more warmer than normal temperatures out west and even up here into Canada can be expected. The active weather is going to be down here near the Gulf Coast, the Texas coast here, all the way over here toward the mid-Atlantic coast in the southeast. A lot of active weather above normal precipitation. That's good. We're going to be drying out across the north and the west here as well, and that is good we're seeing precipitation, hopefully not all at once, but with the latest drought monitor outlooked last Thursday, there is still a lot of those minor, moderate, and severe pockets of drought, and even a little area here between portions of South Carolina and North Carolina there and the eastern part of the state in extreme drought. Hopefully we can chip away at that as we go through the next week or two with all of that moisture moving in. Now, the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida is not outlooking any areas for the next week, so it's been very quiet in the tropical Atlantic after our past landfalling system in Texas. It's going to remain quiet over the next week or so, and this is really because of the Saharan dust that continues to settle in across the MDR, the main development region, and over here toward the Windward Islands, Puerto Rico by Wednesday. That'll move westward toward the greater Antilles and into portions of the Bahamas and getting closer to Florida with some of that dust on Friday the 19th. So with this dust around, a lot of dry air, any system that tries to move off the African coast or tries to develop here in the main development region will be kind of shut off by this dry air. But this will allow the sea surface temperatures to really start to improve while we have quiet weather. So even after our Cat 5 we had in the Eastern Caribbean, which was actually the earliest Cat 5 on record, by the way, is going to improve some of those water temperatures in the Caribbean, but all across the tropical Atlantic over the next week or two. And there are signs in the long range guidance here, like the CFS version two model showing August, we start to ramp up again in the main development region and into the Caribbean and all across the tropical Atlantic. Same thing on the Can Sips model long range, the Caribbean's a hot spot, so is the main development region. And the NMME model is actually in the same ballpark as well. So it does look like August things are going to ramp up. So it's kind of calm before the storm right now. And looking at the National Hurricane Center climatology for the Atlantic hurricane season, it really starts to ramp up, especially that second half of August. We really start to see more named storms and hurricanes out there, and we will be tracking them right here for you on this channel. So forecast breakdown, uh, looking at the highlights here, refreshing cool down this weekend and next week across the central and the eastern. U.S. is still going to remain hot out west, so make sure to stay hydrated out there. Find air conditioning if you can. Active pattern across the southern U.S. this weekend and into next week. A lot of rainfall opportunities there to chip away at that drought across especially the Carolinas and the southeast. Tropics remain quiet for now, but I think we'll ramp up as we go into August, especially the middle and end of August across most of the tropical Atlantic. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below so we can keep you covered right here on Weather on the Go, right at your fingertips with weather forecasts every single day on this channel. Make sure to give the video a like with the thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful and delightful rest of their Tuesday out there.